Welcome to Electron Line, and here's another circuit to challenge us in trying to find out what the voltage drops are across the resistors, across the capacitors, first when the switch is open and afterwards when the switch is closed. Here you can see that we have a resistor and a capacitor on the left side, a capacitor and a resistor on the right side. We have an 18 volt source connected to ground at the bottom, which means that current will flow, flow from the 18 volt down to ground. Ground is typically at zero volts. But notice that no matter what path you try to take, or that the current tries to take, every time you try to go anywhere through the resistor here, you end up at a capacitor, and the capacitor only allows current through for a certain amount of time until the capacitor fills up with charge. And so once this is filled up with charge, this will be positive charge on one side, negative charge on the other side, and current will stop through that branch. On the right side, you can see that once the capacitor here fills up with charge, the current will stop to flow and there no longer will be any current flowing either to the left or to the right branch because there's no way to get across the switch here because the switch is open. Which means at that point there'll be zero volts across the resistor because there will be no current through this resistor and there'll be zero volts across this resistor again because there's no current flowing to the resistor which means all the voltage will be across both of the capacitors, 18 volts across that one and 18 volts across that one because the potential difference from one end to the other end has to be 18 volts. So we have 18 volts across this capacitor and 18 volts across this capacitor. Okay, now that we know what the voltage drop is across each capacitor, we then know that B, V sub B will be at zero volts and V sub A will be at 18 volts. So we can write that here, so V at A V sub A is equal to 18 volts, V sub B will be equal to 0 volts. All right, uh, what else can we say? Well, we can figure out the charge on each of the capa two capacitors. So we know that uh, the capacitance is equal to the charge divided by the potential that puts the charge on there or pushes the charge on there. So Q equals C times V. So Q1 is equal to C1 V1. So let's call this here C1. Let's call this here C2. So therefore, we can say that C1 is 3 microfarads, 18 volts across it. So that's 54 microcoulombs of charge on the 3 microfarad capacitor. For the next capacitor, Q2 equals C2V2, which is equal to 6 microfarads times 18 volts, which would be equal to, yeah, that would be 108 microcoulombs. So that would be initial charge on the two capacitors. So here we can say that uh, C1 is equal to 54 microcoulombs and C2 will be equal to 108 microcoulombs. All right, now we're ready to close the switch. And again, to make things easier to understand because otherwise it gets pretty messy here, we're going to close the switch. I'll use a red, red color here to indicate that switch now is closed. Once that happens, what happens now? Well, once the switch is closed, the current can now flow through this path right here. That will now be the path of the current, I. But what's going to happen now is that A and B will now be the same location, so that will be at the same potential. We can now say, once we close the switch, that V at A is going to be equal to V at B. Now, what will be the voltage drop across the resistor? Since we now have current flow flowing to the resistor, there will be a voltage drop. What will be the voltage drop? Well, that depends upon, of course, the current and the total resistance in the circuit. And at steady state, once these capacitors are fully charged at their new level of charge, whatever that will be, we'll figure that out in a moment, we can then see that all the current will flow through here. So using Ohm's law, we can say that I is equal to V divided by R, and in this case, that would be 18 volts divided by the total resistance along the circuit, 6 plus 3, that would be 9 ohms, which would be 2 amps. So 2 amps of current will be flowing through the circuit, as we've indicated like this. So here, the voltage drop, notice that the voltage across the resistor is equal to I times R. So in the case of the 6 ohm resistor, that's 2 amps times 6 ohms, which is 12 volts. So there'll be a 12 volt drop across this resistor after the switch is closed. And over here, V sub R equals I times R. For this resistor, it will be 2 amps 
Same current, but only three ohms of resistance, which is a six volt drop. So this will now become a six volt drop. Like so. All right. Now what we can also see, since A and B are at the same potential, that means the voltage drop across this branch must be the same as the voltage drop across that branch. Since we have a 12 volt drop here, that means this will be a 12 volt drop. So from 18 volts, this will go down to 12 volts. And over here, same thing. Since A and B are at the same point, that means the voltage drop across here must be equal to the voltage drop across there. So we have to have a 6 volt drop across this capacitor which means now that those two capacitors will hold a different amount of charge. We can now figure that out using the new voltage drops. So Q1 is equal to C1 V1. Capacitance is still three microfarads, but now the voltage drop is only six volts. So that means we have an 18 microcoulomb of charge on that capacitor. And for Q2, that's C2V2, that's 6 microfarads, that's this capacitor right here, times 12 volts of voltage drop, which is 72 microcoulombs. So we can go ahead and write that down. I'll write it across so we can compare. So after the switch is closed, C1 now has 18 microcoulombs of charge, and C2 will have 72 microcoulombs of charge. And now you can see that VA and VB will be at the same potential. There'll be 12 volt drop, 18 minus 12. So VA and VB now both have to be at six volts. So we can write that. So VA will now be at six volts and VB will now be at six volts. Finally, how much charge will now flow through the switch? It's a little more tricky to figure out, but we'll do it. So charge uh, Q through the switch is equal to, all right. We know that, let's start with C1. C1 went from 54 down to 18 microcoulombs of charge. So it is losing charge, meaning some of this positive charge has to then disappear and it cannot go across the capacitor. It has to go through the switch. It, I guess it could go try to go around here, but then there would be a capacitor blocking it there. So the only way for this charge to go to ground would be to go through this path right here. And so that means that some of the charge from there to there would go through the switch from left to right. So how much charge? Well, we had 54 microcoulombs and we went down to 18 microcoulombs. So 54 minus 18 is 36. So that's 36 microcoulombs of charge from capacitor one. And it's going from left to right. How about the second capacitor? Well, we started out with 108 microcoulombs and we drop down to 72 microcoulombs. So some of this positive charge has to make it to ground, cannot go through the capacitor, so it has to come around this way, this way, through the switch, on this way. That's the only way this excess charge can disappear from the capacitor. So that means that from this capacitor we also will have charge going through the switch from left to right, so it's additive from left to right. And how much charge is that? Well, we started at 108 and we went down to 72. Let's see here, that would be 36, an additional 36 microcoulombs. So plus 36 microcoulombs, which is 72 microcoulombs in total going through the switch from left to right after the switch is closed. And that pretty well lays out the entire circuit. And that's how we do that.